All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bearded Skier podcast. I know I've been away for a few weeks, but I am back with a brand new episode. So I'm still experimenting with the format of this podcast, but today I'm going to be splitting things up into three separate parts. So firstly, I'm going to be discussing um, what's been going on within the world of alpine skiing lately. Um, We'll then be going on and I'll be giving my take on some of the results of the autumn international rugby fixtures from this weekend. And then finally, Finally, I'll be chatting with my guest covering uh, branding, some of our influences, um, also what some of the plans we have in the future, which I'm hoping is going to be quite a good opportunity for you guys to get to know me a little bit better. So let's jump straight in, though, to the world of alpine skiing. And uh, recently I came across a article that was discussing a report, uh, a report by Club Med, which was titled The Changing Landscape of the Ski Market 2018-2019. Now, a writer by the name of Lee Bell, he summed up all the findings in uh, an article in Forbes. Now, some of the highlights which he's he's covered um, uh, centre around the growth in the number of people now that are taking at least one piece of tech with them on the slopes to track their um, their performance. So, one in five Brits are now taking an action camera, such as a GoPro or like an activity tracker, such as a Fitbit on the slopes with them and also even though they do appear expensive people are uh, more and more buying and taking drones with them on these holidays so the prediction is at the moment that these sales are just going to keep going up and up what surprised me though was the finding that 86 percent of brits believe that their smartphone is still the best device to take with them on the piece from my experience Uh, With an iPhone, they're just too unreliable due to the lithium batteries shutting down within the cold weather. Um, The battery drains so quickly, you can't then use the apps, you can't play your music, and you can't communicate with anybody in your party if you get uh, separated. Now, um, there's been times where I've actually taken a spare ski sock and had it in the bag and kept my phone in there. That does work only for a brief time but you know if it's sort of anywhere between minus five and minus ten on that day the battery in the end is going to is going to eventually shut down and still the same when I take a uh, portable charger out with me when we go away as a family my dad takes um, some old handheld radios which I I see a lot of people still do Um, it's quite an old-fashioned thing this these radios they have like um, a five mile radius which does get reduced in the um, cold in sort of with the mountains but all the same it seems the batteries seem to last a lot longer than these smartphones now maybe it's different with another with another smartphone brand so if you've had a different experience than this or if you've had a similar one please do please do let me know now lee bell he goes on to say uh, that um Ellis Brigham, they've been reporting uh, more specialist tech being sold, such as the abs avalanche bags now you have to use these these are pretty much um, you know strongly advised if you're going to go off piece do some heli skiing some ski touring that type of thing um i wore them both when i did the heli skiing and then the touring at the end of the season both with val heli ski um they're a bit of a lifesaver we, we obviously never had to use them nothing went wrong but it's one of those things that you know could just as well save your life so the top five wearable tech goes as follows smart watches are at 26 percent action cameras are at 23 percent the activity trackers are at 21 percent the abs airbags are at seven percent and i think the drones they come down as five percent um, so my take on that is that, look, clearly people are buying this stuff more and more than ever with the sole purpose that they want to go and head out to the mountains. For us Brits, we're hearing a lot about now, a lot of articles written about how it's going to be harder, more expensive for us to, to go skiing with factors such as Brexit coming in. These figures, though, of the consumer trends, they're suggesting that this could be the complete opposite. This could be otherwise. Okay, so our next bit of news. Look, uh, it's one thing for a resort to close all season due to the lack of snow, but it's another thing entirely for a resort to close all season 
due to a lift not working. Now, this is the disastrous situation that Cairngorm Mountain is potentially facing this winter, and time is running out fast. So, the ski area, it, it's situated in Aviemore, which is one of Scotland's best-known ski resorts, one of the very, very popular. It attracts tens of thousands of skiers a year. They come in, they bring a lot of income into the local economy. Um, tourism is, is a big, big factor. Skiers have one way of reaching the very top of the Cairngorm Mountain, which is by the funicular. Um, very well known um, is this, this train, but at the moment it has been closed for the last four weeks for urgent repairs and there is no confirmed date for when this will be fixed prompting a lot of widespread fears that it's either not going to open in time for the start of the season or not even open at all naturally there's a lot of anger a lot of confusion within the local community made worse by the fact that Kangol Snow School is now shut for the season so that's cost around 50 jobs in reply to all of this, the Highlands and Islands Enterprise, they are the owners of the land. They've just confirmed that they'll be investing £1 million into snowmaking and cannons for this season in attempt to rescue the upcoming season. Now, all these things it isn't looking good, and it doesn't appear that this is going to be the last twist within this story. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be more to come. We move on now to ski racing, and the World Cup got underway in Solden on the 26th of October. Now, with the women's race, they started on the Saturday in some sketchy conditions, but French world champion Tessa Worley won that race. That night, though, conditions really did close in, and over 50 centimetres fell that night, prompting the race organisers to cancel the men's race, which was for the following day, uh, and that will be rescheduled later on during the season. The next race takes place in Levi, Finland, on November the 17th with the women's race, and then followed by the men's the next day on November the 18th. And that is the winter roundup for this week on the podcast. Okay, so we move on now to the uh, rugby section. Now, I know what you're wondering. Why on earth are we bringing this up? Why is he talking about this? Well, look, firstly, rugby is one of my favourite sports ever, and I do love to talk about it. But the second other thing was that it's always been in my mind. When I was working in France in Val Thorens last, last year, the majority of any of the rugby games, when they took place, it was always on a Saturday, which was our transfer day. Now, myself and any of the other rugby be supporting season airs. we'd always try and grab some bit of an update or some analysis when we weren't uh, dealing with buses or trying to sell lift passes and I just thought this was quite a, a, um, a thing to bring up because they don't play rugby weekly the internationals they don't but when the Six Nation comes around in the new year I will talk about it on the podcast the customers are always asking about it when they arrive on a Saturday they always want to know where they can go and watch the game after they've got their ski gear so in some way it is actually part of the um, winter sports industry so the most important result um, of the weekend was England's 12-11 victory against South Africa in quite a nail-biting finish and following a pretty lacklustre first half from both sides England came alive putting the pressure on the Springboks who conceded a series of penalties in quite key positions on the field with England's co-captain Owen Farrell uh, capitalising and accumulating points with the boot. Now Farrell was a big talking point within the game right at the end uh, making a tackle which many deemed to be high but uh, the on-field and video ref judged it to be legal. Personally I felt this was also the right call. Many people feel that there was no effort to wrap around and use his hands but the replays do tend to show otherwise and who am I to argue with uh, two referees uh, uh, adjudicating it to be okay. We're going to face a far tougher opposition next week against the All Blacks. Uh, everybody knows their reputation as the best side in the world consistently year after year. That said, New Zealand did not have it easy themselves at the weekend. Um, they conceded 31 points with Japan as their opposition. The All Blacks, the New Zealand, they did end up winning 69-31, but there are some positives that we can see some weaknesses there to exploit by England next week. It should make a very, very interesting affair. Japan too, England will face them the weekend after next, and that will be a very thrilling encounter, considering that we're just a year out as well of the World Cup, which itself is being hosted in Japan. They, in my personal opinion, Japan are the dark horse 
horses and they could spring another surprise like they did at the World Cup a few years ago back here in England, knocking South Africa out instinctively though. Uh, Eddie Jones was in charge of them then, he's in charge of England now, uh, so who knows what uh, could spring up. Other results from the weekend, Wales beat Scotland 21-10. Ireland put eight tries past Italy in a game hosted in Chicago, of all places. There's a lot of effort to um, spread the rugby brand currently at the moment over in America. Although um, those two sides did strike me as the bizarre fixture to take over there. There were plenty of other ones, I think, that could have been arranged. Um, But there we go. So another weekend of rugby to come next weekend and that is the roundup on this podcast for the rugby okay so moving on next we've got an interview with uh one of my old school friends when i say interview it's more of a discussion a few weeks ago i went over and had a a catch up with him uh he's doing a couple of things trying to build his own um brand as it were as well we had a bit of a discussion about each other's um, ideas and what we were trying to do and we, in particular he uh, his name's Luca was a big help with me this section is him sort of kind of discussing with me but asking me direct questions so you'll hear me being the one that answers a lot of the questions actually we do another podcast as well on his show and whenever that's up I will um, talk about that and and show you more out of it but uh, let's jump into this now and I uh, hope you guys enjoy what we have to say what's that game that you can play like you describe something and someone a Pictionary? Not, is not, that it? Uh, probably I don't know basically that's what we're going to do are you do. on about the one where you, you draw something on and put it on the other person's forehead and they have to guess uh, no I've never no. done that <laughs> <laughs> okay it's not that one then. no no uh, okay so let's, let's get right to it there's yeah. no yeah when did you start having an idea of you know you wanting to create this this brand or what um well i I think how did it start yeah yeah well i I think it 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 started out of actually um what i was enjoying doing around media Mm -hmm. um which i've always had for a while um even before university but it but it really got going at uni where i was involved in student media um fast forward to now um doing you know vlogging um i'm just trying to pick up podcasting again after not doing it for quite a while yeah um but i guess it's sort of you have all these ideas in your head and for a while i've not had any confidence to put anything to plan or i've tried things and they've not been at all what it is the content stuff revolves around my life right now so mm. I would it's like I'm I'm trying to express myself more and more every single day. The w- work life that I do at the moment, I'm very much on the move. My job requires me to be. There's a lot of opportunities to to, to, to capture things yeah. that are around that. Who who inspired you? What like did you was there a particular YouTuber or a particular TV program or a particular book that got you suddenly? Was that that what was the catalyst? Uh, of well. All this? Um, do you know what? it's going to sound really old-fashioned but like uh, i've always been interested in media since a young age because of the radio so we used i used to have this little um box like it was like a casio box watch that doubled up as a radio when yeah, we were younger. yeah okay now this thing was like bad and bruised but um as this thing got more and more like on the verge of being thrown in the bin one night when i'm like i've, I've always fall asleep with the radio on hearing yeah. other people talk mm-hmm one night it started picking up um transmissions of airplanes flying up overhead well so you can actually hear the so i could hear pilots. like B- ba flight 203 you know going into birmingham from me which was just like it, it blew my it's mind good job terrorists didn't get hold of that <laughs> <laughs> uh, well you know for this little like a uh, box thing that was meant to be playing like five live or talk sport or whatever w- was great but th- yeah so yeah. you know i i think i first started doing media stuff I started writing for the school magazine like yeah. uh, when we were at Reekin together um, and then when I went to uni um, then there was a student radio station yeah and you know still around the whole radio thing you know the the golden ball as it is like in radio certainly in the UK is to go work for the BBC yeah but I've always loved sport and I was like well you know I wanted to you know I, whether it was 
BBC or whether it was TalkSport or however, I wanted to get involved in radio. So yeah, yeah. I got really involved in that side of things at uh, uni, as well as the student paper. Yeah. And I got involved with the student TV. Okay. Um, YouTube, mm-hmm. obviously, with the foot, that's fairly new, but it's Casey Neistat and Jon Olsen, the ex uh, pro skier, who sort yeah. of inspired me on that. Yeah. Oh, decent. So. Where are you now? Where are you now with the brand? Very, very early stages. Mm-hmm. You know, to be honest, I'm not thinking at it from a brand point of view. I'm thinking at it more of like trying to improve my production and output of like your hard skills. That my skills, yeah, yeah. yeah, skills, yeah. Because it's all very much done with my international politics degree is having no <laughs> bearing effect on this whatsoever great what is it 20 27 grand well spent it was mate, I, you know the day i have to use my nuclear disarmament dissertation you know, <laughs> that, that'll be a day for in memories you, you never know mate you never, never know. know you never know so obviously the big question what is Bramski? Explain to me. I like. I'm a complete stranger. I've yeah. never followed any of your your content. Um, well, the the name. What's okay, Bramsky? so because so, you asked me this off off yeah. air, but the name is is it was a nickname that was given to me whilst I was at university for no, yeah. you know, had no bad connotations or anything like that. But for some reason, it's always like followed me, and I would say that it's probably a, it probably is around expressing myself. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's, it's something which I think it's hard to probably come up with to try and put everything that I do into one name. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Without, if I'm trying to get that name to really, really sort of mean something. But I would much rather let the actions kind of do the talking. Yeah, 100. Um, uh, but yeah, Bramski's a name that's ca- it's been catchy. <laughs> catchy, it is, it is good. I know. It is good, and I, I can I see, like it. and you know, it's got the word ski in it, which yeah, you know, which you're relevant. very passionate about. Yeah, yeah. love skiing. No, definitely. I think what w- when I look at a brand, it's more you look at Casey Neistat, you look at Gary Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, you know both of these successful guys. We, we, yeah, we follow both of them. Um, I think they, especially Gary V, he talks about how for for a personal brand, how it really integrates with your lifestyle so especially at the early stages you want to go out with a bang and start creating this personal brand so where how would you where do you see it going like i i I, do you know what actually I, i i feel it going to a point where i can successfully balance all the things that i'm about mm hmm in a way that you know is f- focused on making you know it, doing stuff that makes me happy yeah um whilst also learning and improving on the way i mean obviously you talked about you're just talking about gary and, and like casey yeah those people i love sports mm-hmm. i like my skiing probably first i like my rugby and i like my cricket yeah. um i like to try and keep fit um away from my sport I'm quite a social guy you know whether my friends are close by or they're like away they're halfway across the world um, I'm always someone that tries to, to stay in touch to stay in touch with those people um, I'm an outgoing person I like I like like a drink mm-hmm. you know I like gin and I like I like oh, beer you like, you like the dirty old gin what do you think of pink gin it's quite popular nowadays it is do you know what and i've not tried it although the other day i did have like this this uh, rhubarb one and then there was think there was like a a ginger one as well which i tried which were all right but i'm quite i'm quite old-fashioned i like a basic glass with lime around the edge and then inside and then with like three cubes of ice you know how you go into these places now and they're like they give you a wine glass with like seven ice cubes in it and then it's got like <laughs> one a <drop>. slice <laughs> of cucumber yeah you know I, i'm not about that no, you know just no. give but you just know. old fashioned yeah. old fashioned and family family's like really really important mm. um but i talked obviously a little bit about the the me- the 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 media stuff but generally i guess sort of the way i, I I'm, I'm living at the moment i'm a lot more independent than i was nine ten months ago yeah and i'm very much now 
pers about pursuing things which I know if I don't, I'll often be looking back and regretting. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Wanting to challenge myself, taking myself out of the comfort zone. I also really, really like responsibility, whether it's captain okay. a team, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, or whether it's being in charge of a, a group of people. Um, you know, I'm. You like the you like the leadership role, and yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, you've you've proven that you've you know you, you excel in that role because with your with your rugby at uni and obviously VP sports yeah. on that side of things, I'm sure you have loads more. Yeah, um, yeah. Leadership it, side. Do you know things. what? It, it's one of these things as well. Like all of that's come about after school. We never yeah. played first team. At, 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 cricket or anything yeah. like that but obviously got to captain there and that was probably like the proudest thing actually you know yeah, was awesome. being able to like help a group of people collectively achieve something and develop yeah. along the way with it I enjoyed I enjoyed taking that responsibility yeah yeah we, we spoke about earlier as me trying to get an understanding of what I don't know why I keep calling you Bramski <laughs> but it's catching in, on isn't it yeah it's, it's this brand that you know, you're trying to create. I think a lot of people try to create because they, they see you successful YouTubers and Instagram models where a personal brand has been thrown about quite yeah. a bit. What is a personal brand to you? To just that term. What does it mean? Because uh, you want to create, if you want to create a personal brand, you need to understand I, you know what, what I a think personal brand is. I think it's the end is. game. I don't, I don't think it's something to start with. I think that's why I've sort of not really... I've kind of mumbled about a bit there. Ooh, so we look at like, so look at someone like Casey, nice to add, someone who's in, inspired me to do the, the 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 vlogging amongst amongst other things. When you look at, at Casey, you will cite all the things like that relate to you with him. Yeah, you know. So if I, when I look at Casey, I, you know, besides the fact that you know he's got. Um, you know, he's an incredible f filmmaker. He's a, trying to help other people now with filmmaking. He likes to collab with people. He likes to stay fit. He like he likes to run. Those are the things I would talk about more than the word brand. Um, okay. I don't know. I think like it's probably the thing is cause I've not achieved a brand. I've not set. I've not set up a brand. The brand is probably the end game seven eight years down the line where i'm at a point where it's strong it, it's at like what everything that i do is at such a level that um you know you can call it that you can call it a brand you know if i'm consistently doing uh, getting producing high quality video of me jumping out of a helicopter onto a mountain yeah. doing off piece stuff whilst in the next minute um i'm you know interviewing or talk or talking to 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 someone that's you know been a pro skier or then the next minute i'm commentating in a in a sports match yeah or then it's just or it's something with these things that are, are getting you know I, yeah because i think it's interesting you said it's the end game because i've always looked at it as a process and because you no one starts out as let's yeah let's use cases as, yeah. as an example no one starts out as you know you don't born you don't start with a million followers no. so i think your personal brand is a process they see that your growth I, I, and they follow you for you and I, that is a personal brand for me i i see i see like my development as the process in terms when i say if just being clear like when i clarify the end uh, the, the the brand as the end game what i mean by that is like oh when people hear bramsky they associate you to certain things that is the, like yeah that? like that's like when people like when bramsky gets recognition that's a, a sign okay it's getting it, it's getting traction and that's like the first that's like a, a step to then carry on going it's like yeah. a push to carry on carry on going you know i think everybody wants you know that's doing this type of thing does want recognition as well as wanting to just yeah. express themselves and document what they're doing mm -hmm. so you cause I, I'm, I'm looking at it is is very with my experience as well it's very vague because when i when i 
when I start looking at personal brand, yeah. I, obviously I want to create. I have done it before into for for fitness, bodybuilding. You know, started an Instagram page, um, and that was my personal brand just for you know bodybuilding, abs, six pack. You know, just posting pictures of me. That is my personal brand, and mm. you start small. So if I, I started probably three, four years ago now, and if I carried on, I probably had, you know, would have got a, a more, a bigger following, yeah. but that that was not the path I pursued and I think with personal brand because nowadays you you're building a platform where people will start following you from the start and they can see content from before so yeah. obviously whatever you post on there is your post it's basically your CV isn't it yeah your CV your your digital CV that everyone can see so I think it's important when especially you starting a a personal brand, uh, well, whatever Bramski is now, which you wanted to be, you know, a big personal brand in the future, is be, you know, have a bit more direction mm. because I think everyone, you know, they, it's very generic saying you want to go, oh, you want to go, you, you like, you're going out for a drink, socializing, you know, um, being outdoors, playing sports, yeah. you know, I can find, at least you know 50 percent of the guys on on in england that mm. will say the same thing but what would you you need to narrow down like casey nice that you think of him he, he filmmaker creative filmmaker yeah you need to it's important to have have that goal in mind where it, it will change because as you grow you have different thoughts in your head mm. your surroundings will be different and your priority priorities will be different but it's something i think we need to focus on now yeah like the, i mean the the thing is like for so the, the the vlogging for example like the the primary thing that that sir does at the moment is um documents my daily life which m for the majority of it is my my job so my my day-to-day -day job which is working as a rep uh -huh. um that's a seasonal job it's not yeah. a nine to five 12, 12 months of the year um it's hours that are all over the place for a short time of months and then all of a sometimes there's nothing yeah um but it's tied into the, the you know as a ski rep it's tied into the fact that i'm you know my passion there is of the mountains so i bought this camera um before i headed out before i headed out to france um, because I wanted to capture as much of it as I, I could as possible, mm -hmm. um, and just put it put it up there. Yeah. Um, no prior like really any editing like experience. experience yeah. No, I did put transitions in or like anything like that. Yeah. Um, but n I, I agree with you in terms of a process and the way the process that I'm looking at at the moment is like from the point of view of you know as i touched on already like the quality and stuff but i, I want you know i want to be more and more confident in terms yeah. of on the camera and what I'm, i am trying to create the ones that don't make it get lost because everything is too too vague like you don't have a direct there's no direction mm. um and i was just writing down everything you know you've said is there's no you, you need to package it like a product right like why would someone want to to listen to why would someone want to watch your specifically your your content i like, would like it to be so that they can come because they know that it's a trustworthy place for a, a real earthly insight into no that's it that's what we're talking about you know an earthly insight into certainly like the the the, the winter industry you know where i'm spend a majority of my time now Mm -hmm. You know that my 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 plan is for at least the next two to three years is for to get more and more heavily involved in into that that industry. So okay, let's break that down. Yeah, as an industry. So who who, who are the, so I in, work in, in I, I, so in terms of like the win, the winter sport industry. Yeah. Okay, so, I work in the holiday part of that okay. currently. So in terms of like. Because when you package a product, then obviously you want someone who, that you, you know, air quote, sell to. Yeah. So who who will be the stakeholder? So if you have to break that industry down, so you have the the resort, the 
uh, customers, which are the skiers yeah. and the, the the reps. Who who do you think? If you have to break that down to three different parts that are most important and relevant into your your little bubble, yeah. As so, I think I think it's certainly I think it's the tourists, the customers. Okay. Yeah. Um, number one. Yeah. I would then say uh, it's the the workers. In it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess thirdly it's which probably does sound quite general general is is like the businesses local businesses or just as a whole or, or the the companies you'll be working for your employers or the no others. like no I mean I, I, I think the, the businesses could mean the local businesses like like the you know the the, the people that run the small bars in that resort mm-hmm. but then it could also mean like um say the one of the leading industry makers of ski lifts or that make uh the machine the machinery that basically keep the mountain al- alive across every resort that there is basically yeah so you want to provide yet yeah, an insight into the industry um because that that will be three different areas you can work on in terms of your content and then you have when we break that down and you have the uh, di- yeah, different platforms different social media platforms that right. you can utilize to tackle each each um different di- you know the state stakeholders that right. we've just broken down into um and obviously that that will give you a more a much clearer direction into where you can go yeah because that that's in in my head i'm like okay that is that is good because for tourists for example you can say um if they are going b- out to buy the the ones who are buying ski gear, you can obviously talk about ski gear on YouTube. When they search on YouTube, you pop up. That's what you you kind of want. And you know, for for the workers, maybe you get an insight to see. Um, you know, you can speak to universities. Say okay, or maybe in the, in the future when you are higher up in your in your uh, company and doing maybe the screening recruitment side of things. Mm. You can create contents for that. I'm sure you know a lot of companies will be, you know, happy to to pay people to or or just create for free. And then you know you never know what the if you can provide more value, then you know they pay you. They yeah. You you ultimately you have got the power on them. I think actually the general living life in the mountains is something that actually I dream and think about every waking moment. Um, if I can immerse myself in that life, um, that's something that I get really, really pumped about. But then also building building a life out there as well. Um, you know, they're not going to have, um, you know, they're not going to play rugby and cricket in the, in the mountains. mountains. Yeah. But, you know, what's to stop me creating a, creating a, a club up there? Like, you know, yeah. so... Um, um, yeah, you don't know who Tony Robbins is, but he's someone I follow, and he's more like a practical psychologist. Um, he he's teaches he's everything basically. He owns like twenty odd businesses, and yeah. make, makes you know turnover like five hundred billion. Don't quote me on that. Um, dollars a year type thing. So he's like a ma- investor, author, philanthropist, not motivational speaker, but he's one of the top. Yeah, practical psychologists where they help people change their mindset, change their life type thing. Um, and they've always focused on what is your why? Because, for example, if you live in the mountains already, let's yeah. let's say you've got, you know, you're renting. You, that is, uh, you know, you've that is your why yeah. and you will lose motivation because you've got there. So, I think to, I'm not sure if I'm getting my question out correctly like the way i want to sound is so it's like what because it's always going to be a journey yeah you never i think a, a realistic goal and the the grind is always the the happiest bit is always the most exciting bit is always the journey yeah in my head um what is gonna so for example if you live in the mountains already and you've you, let's say you've bought a house there and you're living there permanently you don't what else what, what is your motivation then if so, people can find use yeah. in my content in informing in informing mm-hmm. them on how to book their next ski holiday or 
where to go or you know along those lines then then that's that's great um but in terms of i mean you just asked the whole like what it, well he tony robbins said what is what is your why yeah i guess like it's it's worth pointing out and maybe this is the answer to that is that like the rest of my family are nothing like me in, in anything to do with this you know yeah. they've all got routines they're all running their own businesses now or, or already um i'm quite a highly competitive person yeah but i would say certainly quietly i've probably always had a little bit of a rebellious streak in that i don't want to like if someone tells me how sh- how I should go about doing it or this would be good uh, you know I, w- I will hear them and I will like I will listen to them um but at the end of the day like I'm going to do go forward now and do what how like what I want to do what you think based, is best what I think is you, best yeah. for me you know we were having that we were chatting that thing earlier it's like oh you, your parents will be like saying we just want what's best for you and yeah. I'm like well I also want what's best for me but what I want what I know is best for me is different from what you want what's best for me yeah Um. so yeah like they would never you know they would never go and live abroad you know no. uh, um, you know they'd say it's a nice idea but whether they'll actually do it something different but yeah. you know it's some you know that's something I'd like to have in four or five years yeah. it's certainly like a, it's like a permanent place out there do I want to be stationed in that place no I want to be off wor- working creating content and, and working with brands and people all across the globe you know that doesn't like just okay like I've got my place there great that's fine that's not like okay now I can settle down and retire no yeah I, I want to like keep on keep on living and keep and keep traveling yeah when I say uh, right now, like I'm just focusing on improving my uh, my my, my, skills, camera, yeah. my skills and my camera. Long, like in the back of my mind, yeah. Long term, I'm thinking, okay, actually, if in five six years time, I'm producing three hundred four hundred high quality videos a year, and that's regarded by other people as a media company because he's got two three people working with him um or he's paying them or whatever and they're all working with these brands and everything if that's how they regard it that that's absolutely great yeah. but like I, I like for me I'd, it's more just like if it comes it comes if yeah. it doesn't it doesn't it's, you don't want to put a label on it you just want to see if, if that's the way it goes yeah because I'm, be. I'm, I, I, I like the, the amount from like the way things have ch- the way things have changed and like the opportunities and places that I've been and everything over like have been so much compared to like when I spent like three years or whatever it was at uni and you know that's kind of the way I'm want to keep going now for yeah. the short term so you know you, you said for um because I think for for YouTube um obviously every every post every video yeah are you just do you have in mind what you think the end no. user no are you have yeah i don't because i think if i because i think if i start thinking about that like a lot now um knowing who i am i'm going to get caught up in worrying about what what people think yeah and there will be no there will be uh, there will be no fun in it and i'll just put the camera down yeah so i'm purely doing it for the fun of like capturing myself holding a uh, holding a camera yeah and then uploading it on on online where people can make of it what what they will um you know and and having focused on that since i picked up the camera um i've been that has enabled me to put out 76 70 whatever it it is videos so so far in the back of my mind have i got i've got a short-term goal that i wanted to achieve 100 videos by this year you know i fingers crossed hopefully i'm on i'm on track to doing that you know and i think at the end of this year would be quite a good it's a quite a good point to take stock and reflect on where i've come from that yeah and then move forward and go okay right what the, what's the next plan with with that yeah because I've, I've always i'm always like 
I would say I'm a bit more old school yeah. in, my, in my in my thinking and um, so when I look at anything it's like I, I, I look at it why I obviously there's times where I'm resting and I just don't want to do anything you know I watch random videos on, on YouTube like yeah. watching a the water balloon explode in slow motion you know <laughs> it has like no benefits in my life um, but at the same time you know people when you look at the the other side of it like Gary Vee, he's he's putting it, he's doing what he's doing but at the same time his product invite it, uh, motivates people to be entrepreneurs to live their life yeah. their, on their own terms and all, all the great products in the world I mean by product as in it, it could be a service it can be like an actual product it can be you know YouTube video a podcast anything so anything that you produce um, so like a drop like Dropbox the founder he the way, the reason why he created it is because one day at uni he forgot his USB yeah and thought okay what the reason why I want to it, if it can benefit his life it can benefit loads of people's yeah. lives so you know when you watch I don't know do you, when you create a video do you think you're creating something that you will want to watch because a lot of good content creators not good con- like a lot of product side of things product mm-hmm. so business they create a business purely for them yeah but because a lot of people are so alike other people end up using it therefore it makes it yeah an incredible you know business I, I, I think I, I I think I hear what you're getting at it's obviously like that you know are you creating stuff because that's what you know you think you'd like or is it stuff that you know what what customers will are like the, the viewers would like yeah and uh, to be fair, like I think my mum asked me something like that the other day. She looked at it and she was like, "You know, obviously you like to watch that." She says, "But you know, someone gonna want to see you talk for five out of like the seven minutes of that 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 video." Um, you know, um, and it's hard for me to know what, what customers would is, want yeah. would want with it because, I mean, like, there's no one vlogging the type thing that I'm doing that's like w- one or two steps ahead of me Yoon Olsen is, bit, is like a like a professional skier yeah and he um, he well he's an ex-pro skier he's been doing all these other stuff he's been on YouTube for a he's now got like somewhere between one to two million in, in subscribers so you know he's been in the he's been in that winter industry for a number of years he's now moved on from that He's like way ahead. Yeah. Um, there was an ex, another ex pro skier who's like a Canadian guy, fairly new to YouTube in fairness, around actually the same time as me. Like he's only like a hundred and ten videos in, something like that. But him, for example, he was an ex pro skier, so he knows all the other ex pro skiers. <laughs> yeah. They're all picking up videos, they're all working yeah. with GoPro and Red Bull as all these companies. So that their foots have already been in the door for a number of years anyway. Yeah. So like it's like those customers are, like those people that watch them I know would not do anything like this so I've got to I, I don't know like it's I think that's probably I need to think about when yeah. I reach the 100 videos and think okay well because do, do I if I decide to try and hone in a little bit more on making videos for these customers that are that are wanting to go out you know I've got to make sure obviously that I'm, I'm doing the right thing the, the content for it yeah for example let's say okay um make informative videos on where to go and you know where to book your ski holiday this year um i mean there's probably there's a time element to that yeah but yeah no nice nice i think i've been so impressed with, with the consistency that you've been uploading and just sometimes it's not about the quality it's, no. it's just like you're focusing on your at the moment your kpi is 100 videos a year and if you do that that's one one every three days pretty much yeah. so that's your target and and that's i think that's impressive i think it's a balance isn't it between between that certainly when i'm starting out it's what i'm finding it's like it's a balance between going okay um is this just about good enough and also wait hang on you haven't 
posted for four days or actually you posted two days ago so you can take another extra day to 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 post that because there's there, there's probably uh, at one point during this this year where i was probably averaging two three videos a week and then like obviously as then things slow down a little bit yeah um you know yeah i think when i think from the conclusion of speaking to you well so far you need like you said you need to focus on on the short term yeah but again don't forget about the long term mm. just keep in mind and figure out something that you can focus on like a focal point like you said it can be you know you're uploading once every three days for example you you upload 10 videos a month yeah i think it'll be quite interesting to actually portion that those type of videos so you have um three videos who, which are informative yeah three videos that are more on the on the vlog side of lifestyle and then free you you know it, anything else that you can come up with you know like a challenge for example or um about current affairs where you can look at like like one of the videos you did the brexit how how that will have an effect on the skiing industry yeah um so just have a more more of a structure so you like casey nice that there's tech tuesdays mm. so that's quite interesting where yeah it is interesting I it like just gives you that. a focal point like oh i struggle with coming out yeah coming up with ideas where obviously you're not in ski season now so your skiing content is 100 it's limited to zero yeah so you want to give yourself the option of okay a backup plan where what if you're too yeah like like now you don't have a you don't have skiing content yeah. so what are you going to do or when you're in season when you have literally no time you know you get back to the resort at what time and you're knackered and you need to put, put a video the next day what can you do that in the room or whatever that can still give you content mm. i think that's important all right so, and there you go that was me at sitting down with my old buddy luca and talking about so many different things a lot of it kind of covering what i'm doing at the moment i guess he was he was trying to sort of help me out quite a fair bit with some direction um which has been really really good but in terms of everything else we on this podcast today we had a roundup of some of the ski news everything that's going on across the globe uh we also talked a little bit up on rugby and i really really hope that you guys enjoyed uh that today uh, i'm always down for some feedback at the moment letting me know what you think of the podcast what are some of the things you'd maybe like to to hear it's particularly obviously if you're into your skiing if you're quite a, a winter enthusiast i'd love to hear from you guys now the ways you can do that first of all if you're watching this on the youtube channel because this full video will be and it'll also be in clips as well you can just comment underneath the video which i'll be able to pick up you can also email, email me directly. That's matt.brammel2014 at gmail.com. But uh, you can also find me on uh, Facebook. You can find me at Bramski there. There's a page. And also Bramski Vlogs on Instagram. Uh, you can also find me at uh, Twitter with the same name, Bramski. Just Bram underscore ski 11. That's my uh, tag. But that's it. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Hit the like on the subscribe button on whatever platform you're watching or listening this on and i'll see you next time